then we're going to move on to the second movement of the eight pieces of the brocade and this movement is referred to as pull the bow and shoot the hawk and it involves reaching across the body much like reaching across the body to grab the bow string and then pulling the arm back like drawing a bow while pushing the forward arm or the bow arm forward this movement can be done similar to just like holding a bow out in front of you and reaching across your body with a bit of a waist twist or it can be done with crossing the hands in front and emphasizing that rounding of the back both of these should have the similar effect it's just the difference will be in activation of the muscles in the waist uh, namely the oblique muscles which create rotation Okay, now let's look at the muscle tension and the state of tension of the various muscles involved in this posture. I'm going to look at the variation which involves some rota waist rotation. If the variation you're interested in does not involve waist rotation, you can just ignore the abdominal muscle activation here, the external obliques on this side, and the external obliques on this side. Everything else will remain the same. So we have activation in the sternocleidomastoid muscle here to turn the head. And then the arms are lifted up and forward, as well as reaching across the body. So in an adductor, adducted state. And the scapula would be protracted and most likely rotated outward. If we would go back and look at how outward rotation occurs, we have activation in the upper trapezius and the lower trapezius and then the serratus anterior not shown here. So here we have serratus anterior or the SA, the upper trapezius here and the lower trapezius here. So then, contrast to that, we'll have all the muscles that are rotate the scapula inward would be now stretched. So there'd be the rhomboids here, uh, the mid traps here are stretched, uh, though I didn't mention that, and the levator scapula here. And like I said, the arms are up and protracted and up and forward. So that's the lats here would be stretched as they pull the arms down and backward. Looking at this from the top, you get a better view of the muscles on the front of the body. So we have adduction and the scapular protraction. So that's the pec minor here and here, pec minor, and the pec major here and here for the adduction. From, from here we can see the lats and then the external obliques on this side active and external obliques on this side stretched. And then let's move on to the arms or the upper limbs. We have activation of the anterior deltoids, lifting of the arms and adduction of the shoulder. And then of course stretching of the antagonist muscle being the posterior deltoid. The elbow is flexed so we have stretch in the triceps and activation in the biceps. Fingers are flexed so anterior muscles of the forearm or the finger flexors and on the bow arm we have activation of the finger extensors in the posterior part of the forearm. And typically this posture starts with the elbow bent a little bit. So the, the bicep here on this arm as well will be active. Okay, so let's go to the end position. Now you see the bow arm is fully extended and the draw arm is fully pulled back. The elbow would be fully flexed, so you can't really see it from this position, but we'll see, we'll see it from the top. The 
sternocleidomastoid muscle still the same because the head is still looking the same direction but now those muscles that were stretched to because the scapula was rotated outward they now are active as the scapula is pulled rotated inward so that's the rhomboids here levator scapula here and here and then we have activation in the posterior deltoids to get that abduction horizontal abduction pulling the shoulders back now and opening the chest so this arm becomes fully extended so the triceps are active and these fingers are extended as well and then we have full elbow flexion so the tricep on the drawing arm is now stretched and then the scapula is now retracted so now the serratus anterior is now stretched and the lats are active because they help pull down back and inwards so at the top here we see a better view of the chest the pec major is now stretched as the chest is open pec minor is now stretched because the scapula is now retracted and then we see what we couldn't see it before bicep active bicep stretched on the front of the body and the arms so I want to show here this relationship between the muscles on the anterior part of the body and the posterior part of the body and what's referred to as the serrato rhomboid complex and this is the relationship of how the serratus anterior serratus posterior rhomboids and uh, to some extent the pec minor all are interlinked uh, both through the structures they attach to and the fascia which connects them together so here in red is the uh, serratus anterior which connects on the inside of the scapula and wraps around to the front part of the ribs helping to protract the scapula or move it forward in this direction on both sides the pec minor helps pull it down and in furthering that you know in this direction here when you have scapular protraction now so when that happens we see here this the connection of the rhomboids here and the um, serratus posterior on the back now the serratus posterior just connects from the spine to the ribs but is connected to the serratus anterior via the connective tissue or fascia and we see here this layer of fascia here and re represented by this light blue and this provides a surface for the scapula to somewhat slide on as it protracts or retracts um, by the activation of the serratus anterior or the rhomboids so we see here that there's a when the rhomboids contract or become active there will be tensile forces transmitted via through the connective tissue and also the actual attachment to the skeletal part that it is attached to will have an effect all the way through to the serratus anterior and the same fascia covers this pec minor muscles so when we have so in this movement here we have the bow being drawn back we would have activation of the rhomboids pulling the scapula this way creating tension along the fascia through here into the serratus anterior pulling this way causing this stretch all the way through here maybe even into the pec minor muscles so the stretch going this way
And then in the starting position, before you're about to draw the bow, the scapula is protracted. It's shown in the protracted position right now, actually. And so this is pulling this way, and so is this, and via those attachments to the scapula itself and the connective tissue or the fascia, we have the tensile forces going this way through that fascia and the muscles. So I think we can look at this Qigong movement as putting tensile forces in the front and back of the body and basically exercising or training those muscles and tissues via a stretch and contract through their full range of motion and ability going both directions fully close so we have adduction reaching across the body and then pulling the bow back and making those forces go this way now I'm using the modern fascial meridians as a scheme for analyzing these this movement we see that the this mainly concentrates on the front and back arm lines so when drawing the bow the back arm line is active here and here and then you see the posterior deltoid muscles here the tricep and the drawing arm will be stretched but all these muscles here will mostly be active and then in the reverse case when you're at the starting position the muscles in the front of the body or the front arm line are active here pec, pec major pec minor um, the biceps and both the drawing and bow arm are slightly bent and then we when you repeat this exercise it simply goes back and forth from activating the back and stretching the front to activating the front and stretching the back so we'll have forces going in like this at the start and this is going this way at the start and then going this way as we pull away and pulling this way on the back of the body. I always want to just remind people that I'm not a doctor or physical therapist. I haven't studied actually this any of this formally. I just learned it on my own through reading books, how most people do. Uh, so here's my references. Uh, if you'd like to check them out and maybe learn a bit yourself, check these out this is how I determine what I think what muscles are active and or stretched it's all based on the information in these books and also how the fascia is involved is in these references as well so check them out if you're interested if you found this video interesting or worthwhile to watch please like and follow me on Instagram Hit the bell notification so you know when I upload the next video and subscribe if you haven't already.